Now the question is high stepping gate is a feature of although the question which was asked which we came to know it was asked in a very simple language that foot drop is a feature of answer is common peroneal nerve injury now we have slightly modified the question in order to make it more understandable and <clears throat> having a broader perspective or broader view of the kind question that are likely to be asked in future that high stepping gait is a feature of now we are have in the options we are having quadriceps weakness the tbialis anterior weakness gluteus maxima uh, medius weakness as well as ankle arthritis in order to understand this just try to imagine like if this is the lateral view of the leg and if we move down then this is the lateral view of the ankle and this is a rough diagrammatic representation of the foot so this is the ankle and here it is called to be in the neutral position this is neutral now imagine if this is the leg and the foot is moved down in this direction so at the level of ankle this movement is called as plantar flexion while on the other side if this is the leg and if the foot is elevated up in the lateral view then at the level of ankle this movement is called as dorsiflexion this movement is called by the name of dorsiflexion okay so these are the two possible movements at the level of ankle apart from other combination of the movements which are called by the name of supination pronation inversion eversion which occurs at the subtalar joint but here we have to concentrate on the plantar flexion as well as dorsiflexion of the foot or the ankle the major ankle dorsiflexor is tibialis anterior and tibialis anterior is supplied by the deep branch of common peroneal nerve so this is the motor art motor branch of the common peroneal nerve which is responsible for supplying the tibialis anterior and tibialis anterior in turn is responsible for bring about the dorsiflexion of the ankle <coughs> that means the dorsiflexion of the ankle is the function of the common peroneal nerve now all of you might be aware of the fact that gait is having two phases one is a stance phase and the other one is swing phase now stance phase is when any part of the foot is in contact with the ground any part of the foot contact with ground while the swing phase is categorized further into three that is accelerating mid swing and deaccelerating now during the accelerating phase of the swing that means during the initial phase of the swing that means at the time of <coughs> uh <coughs> at the time of heel strike of the stance phase the heel will strike only when the foot is in dorsiflexion if the foot is in dorsiflexion imagine this is the foot if the foot is in dorsiflexion then only it will strike with the heel on it so that is the initial phase of the stance if the dorsiflexors are weak because of common peroneal nerve injury if there is a common peroneal nerve injury and the dorsiflexors are weak then what will happen that the patient won't be able to dorsiflex the ankle as a result of which it will be kept plantar flexed or in a foot drop which is known by the name of foot drop and in order to bear weight on the ground or in order to make the plantar surface to come in contact with the ground he has to elevate the foot higher this is the reason why it is called by the name of high stepping gait so we have just 
modified the question making it more complex because this is the likely possibility that in near of the future these are the kind of the question that you will be facing with that high stepping gate is the feature of answer is common peroneal nerve injury okay apart from this the quadriceps weakness is responsible for hand to knee gate you will come to know the biomechanics there is a reasoning for that but this is not the correct platform for explaining all those things because of the limitation of the time then tbialis anterior weakness yes this is the answer that high stepping gait is a feature of tbialis anterior weakness now if there is a gluteus medius weakness this is responsible for trend dielenberg gait this also requires a massive explanation that how gluteus medius is a part of this abductor mechanism leading to a trend dielenberg gait and ankle arthritis you see if there is a secondary arthritis or a primary or the secondary osteoarthritis of the ankle joint then it leads to the fixation in the neutral or in the dorsiflex position not particularly in the plantar flex position so this is the reason high stepping gait is a feature of tbls anterior weakness is the answer although the question was relatively simpler which was asked is that foot drop is a feature of answer is common peroneal or the deep branch of the common peroneal nerve next question is interesting question which was considered to be a more <coughs> likely to be a question asked in the anatomical section but because we have to discuss this uh, this question in particular as far as radial nerve is concerned it is a very commonly injured nerve and the questions are repeatedly asked based upon the radial nerve injury this question again is extremely simple because they are just asking what is the name of the nerve which is responsible for supplying the shaded area but behind that what are the likely possibilities of a complicated or the complex questions which could be asked in future as i'm repeatedly saying this as we have discussed in the lectures also that nowadays the pattern of the questions are like as if we are working in the emergency you are an, you are being a intern working in the emergency seeing a patient diagnosing it and possibly <clears throat> referring it to the particular or the desired department okay so this question is all about the radial nerve injury you see again we are repeating the question that the nerve which is responsible for supplying the shaded shaded area in the dorsum of the hand that is a simple ask that the question has been if this is humerus the name of the nerve which is lying in close approximation to the humerus is radial nerve now initially it descends medial to the humerus after that through the spiral groove posterior to the humerus it crosses and descend lateral to the humerus just above the level of the brachioradialis origin it divides into its terminal branches and one of the terminal branches pin that is posterior inter osseous nerve <clears throat> now one of the characteristic property of the posterior inter osseous nerve is that it is a pure motor nerve being a pure motor nerve it has got no sensory branches so it is not going to supply any sensory region in any part of the upper limb but proximal to this posterior interosseous nerve that means the common radial nerve is having both motor as well as sensory components now in this shaded area what we have seen in the question in this shaded area this is the area which is supplied by the radial nerve that means it is the part which is supplied proximal to the <coughs> branching of the radial nerve that means by the common radial nerve some of the sensory zones in our body are known by the name of autonomous sensory zone these autonomous sensory zones are those which are supplied exclusively by a single nerve that means there is no other nerve which is overlapping and supplying that particular region of the body there are only few examples of those in our body and one such example is the radial nerve itself if this is the dorsum of the hand and being the thumb this is first dorsal web space of the hand and this first dorsal web space of the hand is specifically supplied by by radial nerve that means it is the autonomic sensory zone for the radial nerve if the patient is having loss of sensation at this zone 
it is indicative that the radial nerve is injured above the level of brachioradialis origin but if the motor component of the radial nerve is not functional but the patient is having the sensations in this region intact that it is indicative of posterior interosseous nerve injury <clears throat> so that is the significance of the question that i'm asking or i'm repeating that likely are the possibilities that these are the kind of the complicated questions to be asked in frame in nearest of the future like if there is a loss of sensation again i'm repeating this that if there is a loss of sensation in this region which is exclusively supplied by the radial nerve then it is indicative of common radial nerve injury nerve injury above the level of brachioradialis origin but if the sensations are intact it is again a radial nerve injury but of that of the branch that is posterior interosseous nerve injury which is pure motor branch of the radial nerve so the question which was asked was relatively simple simpler that the nerve responsible for supplying the shaded area in the dorsum of the hand in particular the first dorsal web space of the hand answer for this question is radial but be aware of the fact that in future again i'm repeating this that in future likely are the possibilities that they will ask you what is the level of the radial nerve injury at the level of a spiral groove above the level of spiral groove or below the level of a spiral groove hope you understand the importance of this question uh, thank you very much for listening hope you get to know the concepts related to the questions which were asked <clears throat> it is mandatory to be told that nowadays the questions are not like that you can mug up the one liners and answer them accordingly the question pattern has been changing it has been evolving in the form of being more practical more explorative as well as <clears throat> the kind of the concepts which are required for understanding and marking the answers for that particular ask for rest of the questions please refer to my next video thank you so much and all the best